Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a paper texture in Photoshop. This is gonna be part one of a two, maybe three part series of paper texture Photoshop tutorials. In this first one, I'm gonna show you how to make parchment and then I'll probably show you how to make handmade paper and some crafting paper and other things like that. So make sure to come back and watch the follow up videos. But for now, let's go ahead and get started with this parchment paper texture. I'm going to come up here to File, New, and I'm going to start this one with a document that is 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. I'll explain to you after we've created the texture why I'm being so specific here with these numbers. For now, this is going to be the size 1024 by 1024, resolution 72, RGB color 8-bit and go ahead and click create. So our background is gonna stay white. We're not gonna make any changes to that, but I do wanna add a new layer on top of this. And then I'm gonna right click here and convert this to a smart object, just in case I wanna make changes later on to the effects that I'm gonna apply to this. So this is gonna be our fiber texture. So these are just the fibers that you see inside of a paper like this. So once you have this set up as a smart object, you can come over here to your foreground background color, make sure that they are on default. Just go ahead and click on that little icon right there, right above the colors to reset that. Now we're gonna come up to filter, render and clouds. We're gonna come back up to filter, render one more time. This time we're gonna choose difference clouds. So this is a little bit strong for what we're doing. So I'm gonna come back up here to filter. This time I'm just gonna use the last one that I use. So this one right here, difference clouds, just to lighten that up a little bit. And you should end up with something that looks like this. You do have some veining in here, but it's not extremely strong. So this is a good base. From here, we're gonna come back up into the filters and we're gonna add one last filter. So we'll come here, filter, stylize and we're gonna find edges. So you'll have something that looks like this. This is gonna be the fiber. Okay, from here, we're gonna come up here to the layer mode and I'm gonna bring this here to difference because I do want those fibers to really stand out here. And I'm gonna control this by adjusting the opacity and the fill. So I'm gonna bring the fill to about 50% and then I'll bring the opacity uh, down to 50% as well. And you might not be able to see this on the screen. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can, you may not be able to, but the strength of these fibers that you see here is gonna be controlled right here with the opacity and the fill. So if you come here and you add uh, maybe 10% to the opacity, you'll, you can see how much stronger that gets there. So you can work with this to get the right amount of fibers for your project. But for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 50%. And this is gonna be the base of this texture. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is add the color in. So you could easily leave it here. It looks kind of like a vellum uh, style, but we wanna go for the parchment. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a color. So I'm gonna come down here to this little circle icon and choose solid color. When you're adding color to this, make sure that you don't go too bright with it because it's gonna become unrealistic. So just make sure that here in HSB, that your saturation stays at about 10%. Your brightness can go all the way up to 100. That's fine. What we need to control here though is the hue, so the color. And you'll once you have this set to, your saturation set to 10%, your brightness set to 100%, you can easily get a really good color just by adjusting your sliders here. So I'm gonna go with um, this green color right here and I'm gonna click OK. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is adjust the layer mode for this color fill layer to color. And you can see how um, it's maintained that nice parchment. Like a parchment is more of a brown, kind of like yellowish brown color. So I'll go ahead and leave this at about uh, 50 and that'll get us really close to where we wanna be. So it's just like a light yellowish brown tone. 
And of course you can, you know, set this to any color that you need. So this is going to be the finished texture. But from here, what I wanted to show you was why I chose the 1024. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a texture. I'm going to come here to edit, define pattern, and I'll just call this uh, parchment. Click OK. Now I'm going to open up a new file and I'm going to make it pretty big. So it's going to be 36 by 36. This is usually um, like a, a 12 by 12 size paper. So we're going to go ahead and click create on that. I'm going to unlock this, double click here and add that pattern overlay to it. So this one that we just created. And what I wanted to show you is this. So notice that you don't see any seams here. That's because Photoshop uses the power of two for the cloud filter. So if you're familiar with making textures for gaming, then I think you'll understand this a little bit more. But basically what this is, is if you use a document size that is divisible by two and you're using that cloud texture, this is not going to work for every single texture, but it does, it does work with the cloud texture. So if you're using something that is divisible by two so say the document is 64 128 256 512 1024 so on and so on then you're always going to be able to get this nice repeating pattern from that cloud texture so i thought that this was worth mentioning because it'll reduce a step in your process if you wanted to create a repeating pattern and the cloud render is the base of your texture this is going to work out really well so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, any or all of those things would be greatly appreciated. And as always, make sure to head over to prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.